Chefs, what was the most ridiculous excuse a customer had for sending back a meal? Story one. Okay, this isn't the same thing, but still completely ridiculous. I worked at an Italian restaurant as a waitress for a short time as the customers sucked. This lady in her 40s ordered a Hawaiian pizza and pitched a fit saying how we got her order wrong. I asked her what was wrong with it, and she said it wasn't her Hawaiian pizza and the toppings were wrong. I looked at it, and it had diced tomatoes, pineapples, and ham, exactly what the menu stated. Showing her this, she said, What are you talking about? These are yellow. Pineapples are orange. Confused, I got my manager, and he tried explaining that pineapples are quite yellow, not orange. But if she didn't like it, she can order something else from the house. She got mad and said, No, that she wanted this, but with the right pineapples. She started explaining what they looked like. I said, wait, do you mean oranges? <laughs> As she completely described oranges. She said, no, pineapples, and started describing oranges again. At this point, I take my phone out, googled oranges and pineapples, and show her. She points at the oranges and yells at the top of her lungs, yes, those, I want those. My manager told her we do not have those, and she can either pick something else or eat what she has. She left. <laughs> I, I am so upset and confused. What the frick? How does, how does she not know? I'm really trying to think of reasons here, but seriously, folks, how does a woman in her 40s who knows about Hawaiian pizza not know the difference between pineapples and oranges? <laughs> ah! Story two. I was working at Dairy Queen, not necessarily a chef, but I made some damn good blizzards. Anyway, this lady comes through drive through screaming that she wanted a small Oreo blizzard. No big deal. When I handed it out, she jabbed at it with her spoon and looked at it like it was a dead mouse. She stated, the Oreos are too pulverized. I want another. B, the Oreos come pre-shredded. Whatever, they cost us 25 cents to make, so I made her another one. Mix it for about half a second, leaving massive chunks of Oreo on top and barely mixed in. I handed it out and she said it looks perfect. Her ulterior motive? She wanted the mistake for free. She asked, well, what are you going to do with that one? Can I have it since you can't give it to another customer? I said, I'm sorry, the Oreos are too pulverized, and threw it away right in front of her. Story 3. When I was younger, I was a cook for a really popular Denny's. It was basically the cult spot to go. Wedding? Denny's after. Prom? Denny's after. You get the idea. At the time, I had bright pink hair, something to keep in mind. Now, it's tapering down a bit, it's around one or so, so it's before bar rush, so my other cook for the shift took a break, leaving just me. One of the waitresses comes back, saying that one of her customers found a hair in her French toast. I saw the plate. Everything had been eaten aside from two little pieces with a long black hair between. Now, I made her a new order, French toast, bacon, hash browns, and brought it back to the table. As I put it down, I said... Here's your remade order. I would like to point out that your waitress has short blonde hair. I remove my hat. I have pink hair, and you have long black hair. Conveniently the same as the hair you found. Next time you want free food, go to a effing soup kitchen. And went back to my line. My night manager and GM were both huge stoners at the time and thought the whole thing was hilarious. <laughs> I absolutely love this. Honestly, I don't really like Denny's personally, but I would gladly go eat at this Denny's if I heard that happened there. I would make that my new favorite spot. Moons over my hammy all around. Story four. When I was a kid, I worked as the shift manager at a haagen dip shop. It was one of the busiest streets in town, and in the summer, we would have lines out the door all day. Most of our customers during these periods were tourists. That is important because we never really worried about losing their repeat business. One gentleman ordered an elaborate quadruple scoop banana split with oodles of everything. I obliged and whipped up the effing SS diabetes of banana splits, complete with sprinkle-covered spires of whipped cream delicately drizzled with hot fudge and caramel. This thing had Oreo bits, brownie crumbles, Heath bar chunks. I am talking the effing works. Anyway, after I've completed this culinary masterpiece, it turns out with all those goodies, my creation was almost $15 and dude was not having it. 
I pointed to the huge board behind me displaying the prices of all these delicious items this man had purchased and told him I would get in trouble if I gave any more than a 10% discount, but he just refused to pay. So right there in the middle of a scorching hot summer day in an ice cream shop full of tourists and their kids, I held up this magnificent work of art, enough frozen goodness for at least three people, and offered it up for sale for $3. Needless to say, some dude with his kids right behind the original customer grabbed it right up and shared it with his family. Dude was livid. So I explained that he ordered a custom sundae the way he wanted it, and I sold it as a second-hand sundae that may not have been the way the purchaser wanted it. All in all, the whole thing cost the company pennies, and the look on this butthole's face was priceless. I want to find the OP of this story and shake their hand. Seriously, too many places bend over backwards with this customer is always right nonsense, and it has made for some really entitled people. Not always, of course, but in this case, this guy was a dink, and you got revenge in the best possible way. This story breathed life into my day. Story 5. I had dinner with a crazy family friend that refused to eat anything brought to the table. Old country-style restaurant, no menus, you eat what they bring out. She insisted that they prepare her special portions of their traditional recipe dishes, prepared precisely how she wanted them, and went back to the kitchen to supervise that they were following her instructions exactly. She told us that she had them remake her vegetables three times with pride. I was 12 and it was my birthday dinner. I've never been so embarrassed. I asked the waiter to take me into the kitchen. I told the folks that after she went back, I wanted to see the big kitchen. What I actually did was apologize to all the cooking and wait staff for my guest. For years, I thought my parents didn't know. What I did not know was that the manager stopped my mother on the way out and complimented her on having such a polite child. I was 33 when she told me. Story 6. All right, server here. This happened to me last night. I work at a restaurant where we offer a grilled two-pound lobster for $60. Hefty enough, but you can also get it stuffed with crab meat and breadcrumbs for an additional $10. So a woman at my table last night inquired about the additional price and goes, Ah, well, I'd love to get the stuffing, but I'm not going to run up the bill that much. I told her I completely understood, smiled, and ordered a simply grilled lobster. As it turns out, the kitchen made a mistake and prepared a lobster with the additional stuffing anyways. I brought it down to her and explained to her that there would be no additional charge since it was the kitchen's mistake and to enjoy. She eats the entire lobster and then waves me over. Yeah, I know this had the stuffing and everything, but that's not what I ordered, and I'd like them to remake it for me. I'm just not very full because it was mostly breadcrumbs. I told her politely that it's exactly the same amount of meat, just with breadcrumbs and crab added, and then she said that it seemed like we had removed a lot of the lobster to fill with breadcrumbs. At this point, my manager came over and assured her this was not the case. Still, she demanded that we make her another. She started making a real fuss about how this wasn't what she ordered, and that the enhanced version of the dish left her hungry. Needless to say, the kitchen was peed. We remade it, didn't charge her for the second one, and even tried to comp her dessert to keep the bee happy. And what did she do after we kissed this much butt? Stiffed me on a $140 tab, making sure to write on the bill the service was horrible, because I think she picked up on our disgust at her lack of tact. Fun times. That piece of crap ate a two-pound lobster with stuffing, then lied so she could eat another two-pound lobster and didn't even tip? Not that I would want this for your restaurant, but I hope that woman got food poisoning and spent the next day blasting four pounds of liquid lobster and breadcrumbs out of both ends. Really tempted to start a garbage person of the video award when I hear about folks like this. Story 7. Woman orders fries for her and her friends after church. I bring fries. Oh, these are too cold. We want new fries. I go make the fries myself, cook them longer than normal, and immediately serve them after taking them out of the fryer. They were steaming still. The woman looks at it, touches it, and I crap you not, says, Oh, these are ice cold. Exact words. Had to get the manager to deal with it. I wouldn't be surprised if she was trying to make you give her really hot fries so then she could burn herself and blame the establishment. You really can't get fries that much hotter. Once they come out of the oil, the rate at which they cool is ridiculous. 
For her to burn herself, you would have to bring her in the kitchen and let her bob for fries. I think this would have been an acceptable solution to the problem. Story 8. Stealing this story from a server friend of mine, horrible woman comes in and orders the mussels. After my friend brings the plate out, the woman claims that the kitchen stole the meat out of the shells. My friend tries to explain that live mussels are placed in the pan, so it's not possible that there are more shells than meat pieces. The woman then spreads out the shells and meat on the tablecloth to prove her point. Discovered she was wrong and stormed out. The awkward part was that the woman was at the table of three other friends who were mortified and paid for the meal with a huge tip. Something tells me that lady might be three friends short now. Yeah, I'm sorry, but if I was out to eat with a friend who did that, I would absolutely be mortified. I might still be friends with them, maybe, but I doubt I would go out to eat with them again after that. I don't get how people can make scenes like this in restaurants, but maybe that's just my social anxiety talking. Story 9. In my table waiting days, I had a guy eat his entire 14-ounce prime rib except for the fat. He had made a pile of the fat on his plate and asked me to weigh it so he could have a pro-rate refund equivalent to the weight of the fatty bits. For those who don't know, roasted prime rib contains a ring of fat in the middle and is usually served with some fat at the tip. People enjoy eating the fat with the meat. The weighing and prorate part alone certify this guy as a grade-A douche. Story 10. Where I work, people will often ask for their undercooked burgers to be remade. It's normally no big deal, but every once in a while you'll get a ridiculous customer. This one time a customer came up to the counter and told us their burger was undercooked and demanded we recook it. Unfortunately, they decided not to tell us until they were three quarters done with the food. So my manager happily obliged and had their burger remade. After it was finished, he cut the burger into fourths and gave the customer a fresh quarter of a burger well done. The look on their face was justified. Story 11. We had a grouper entree and the wholesaler was out of grouper, so my Sue got some Corvina instead. It looks and tastes just like grouper. Forgot to mention the substitution to the servers and a gentleman sent it back claiming it wasn't grouper. I just had to give him a slow clap for having the taste buds to tell the difference. I comped his meal without complaint and jokingly offered him a job. Story 12. Obligatory, not a chef. My mom, when she was a waitress at a diner, had a regular who would come in for Sunday lunch every week. She would send back the meal every time, as in literally every time, and she would make up lame excuses. It got to the point where my dad, the chef at the diner, would just hold the same plate in the back and send it back out to her. She would accept it every time. I mean, that is clever of your dad and frankly pretty funny, but holy crap, if I were your mom... I would have told the woman to leave by the fourth Sunday. Sorry, not dealing with your crap today, Rebecca. If you try to send back that meal, I am going to make you eat the plate. Your choice. Take a seat if you dare. Story 13. As a waiter, I had a lady complain that her pasta was too soft, so I had it remade. But then it was too chewy. So I asked her if there was something else she'd like instead of the pasta. So she ordered lasagna. Yep, it was so awkward because by this time, everyone else at her table was done eating. How are people unaware how awkward that is for everyone else at the table? They're self-centered. They have no idea how other people feel because they don't give a F. Story 14. Once upon a time, I worked at Pizza Hut. Customer, I would like a meat lover's pizza with no meat. At that time, that would mean she'd only have sauce and cheese, and this pizza would cost more, a more expensive cheese pizza. Us. Here's your cheese pizza, ma'am. Her. I didn't want a cheese pizza, I wanted a meat lover's pizza. She did this many times. We call this the stupid tax. Story 15. It turns out she couldn't eat it because she was allergic to shrimp. She ordered the jumbo shrimp pasta. I really thought that was self-explanatory. Another guy sent back his cheesesteak because it was too cold. It was pretty cold because he sat and drank for 45 minutes with it sitting in front of him before he even touched it. Story 16. Before I was a chef, I worked a year at a state fair in an Orient Express booth. A woman ordered a plate of sweet and sour chicken and 10 minutes later came back with every fried chicken chunk broken open chicken consumed and demanded a refund, saying there was no chicken in the breading. 
Dear people who try to pull this crap with restaurants to get free food, I want you to know that everyone at the restaurant, everyone around, and everyone you know is judging you. I would tell you what they think of you, but I think you might be able to figure that out. Here's a hint. It isn't good. Story 17. Not a chef, but as a server. A customer sent back a rare prime rib because it looked like a dead animal. I suppose he wanted me to go and get a live one? Usually I end up saying, like, it is a dead animal to people like this. People aren't always happy with me. Story 18. Once someone returned a burger saying there was a bug in it. Her kid interrupted with, But mommy, you told me to put that there. I had the most smug look as she left shamed. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.